both squared, but for the n plus first term, this is n plus one factorial squared times n factorial squared over x to the n. This has to be less than one, right? So now let's look at this. What is n plus one factorial as it relates to n factorial? n plus 1 times n. Um, and then that whole thing is squared. Agreed? So what happens when I have a times b quantity squared? Can I just call that a squared times b squared? Can I do that? Listen to my question. If I have quantity a times b squared, is, is that, can I call that a squared times b squared? Yes. Absolutely you can. So what this becomes is n plus one squared times n factorial squared. Great, that cancels with that. This cancels with that. And now what I have is that this whole thing is the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 1 over n plus 1 squared times x is uh, and this has to be less than 1 in order to guarantee convergence. So as n approaches infinity, what does this go to? 0. Does it matter what x is? No. No matter what x is, 17 billion. I don't care. 1 over n plus 1 quantity squared, as we take the limit as n approaches infinity, this whole thing will go to 0. Because x is finite, right? x is a finite value. So whatever I have here, 0 times something that's finite is equal to 0, which is most definitely less than 1. Therefore, what values of x could I possibly have here that will make this statement true? All values of x, which means that my radius of convergence is infinity, which means that the interval of convergence is from negative infinity to infinity, which is one of the three cases, right? Mm -hmm. We said either it only converges at the value that it centers, or it converges for all real numbers, or there's a finite interval that is r units away from where it's centered that we call our interval of convergence. So here, interval of convergence, all real numbers. Now, so there was an n that remained. That made it easy. I say that makes it easy because you don't have to check endpoints for that, obviously. Okay, cool. Let's talk about the next thing which I brought up yesterday, and that is looking at things like um, I forgot my watch at home today, and it's like, I, I've checked my wrist probably a thousand times. I said, no, that's the old But I've checked it many times. We are adding really I have that uh, we're sticking with this today and tomorrow and then Friday starts our last section but I'm kind of gonna get into the last section the next couple days I know that tomorrow obviously is a minimum day due to open house um, but this is still on power series, but I, I want you to, to recall that um, 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n for negative 1 less than x less than 1, right? This is definitely something that we've talked about a few times now. We have that. Got it. And we talked about by differentiating or integrating um, you can really think about it as, anti, as differentiating or integrating um, this series 
by using term-by-term -term differentiation or integration. Agreed? Right? Like we, that's what we talked about yesterday. Yes? And moreover, not only do we have what the new power series are going to be, but we also have that the radius of convergence remains the same. Not necessarily the endpoint, so not necessarily the interval of convergence, but the radius of con convergence uh, stays the same. So then I brought up, okay, great, we did a, a few of these other you know, um, problems, but then I, I said, hey, pretty soon, meaning right now, we're gonna find a power series for something that is not this nice rational expression, but an inverse trigonometric function. So let's just say that we started fresh, right? We remember this, but that's all that we really know. And then this is what we have. And the directions would say something like, find a power series representation for arctangent of x and indicate the uh, interval of convergence. Starting here, I have no idea what arctangent of x's power series is going to be. However, I think, I, I want to turn this into something that looks like one over one minus x, because I know that. But this doesn't look like that. However, its derivative somewhat looks like that. Agreed? So I'm going to say, hey, if I were to differentiate this, so the way that I'm going to show that is by differentiating with respect to x, I would have what? What is the derivative of arctangent of x with respect to x? 1 over 1 plus x squared, also known as 1 over 1 minus negative x squared, right? So relating this to what I, what I mentioned up here, what could you say is true about this power series? So now ignore this, but only looking at this, the one over one minus negative x squared. How would I represent that as a power series? The summation as? N goes from zero to infinity of? negative x squared to the end, because all that you're doing, this looks just like that, only inside here it's negative x squared, so instead of just x to the end, it's going to be negative x squared to the end. And then I would say, oh, this is just, the summation is n goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the end times x to the two n. Bam. Now that I have that, let's go back up to the original question. How am I going to find a power series representation for arctangent of x? Anti-differentiate your summation? Yeah, uh, meaning this, yes. with respect to x. Because I differentiated with respect to x, I'm going to anti-differentiate with respect to x. So let me be very, very clear. When you differentiate or anti-differentiate what's inside a summation, you're only doing so with respect to x, meaning that the ends that are there, you treat as a constant, or you treat as constant, okay? So what would this look like if I were to treat n as a constant and find the anti-derivative of what's inside? So really what I'm saying is this, this is gonna be c, plus the summation is n goes from zero to infinity of something. And really, you know, I, I should put that whole thing in parentheses to indicate that it's the summation of that whole thing. So we have that. So now, what's the antiderivative of, I'll highlight it, of that? What's the antiderivative of that guy with respect to x? So that negative one to the end is like a constant multiple. It's just chilling. So what's the antiderivative of x to the two n? 
So you're differentiating. I want the antiderivative, remember? I hear a lot of mumbling, and I think what you guys are saying is that constant's going to stay there. X to the 2n's antiderivative is x to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Okay, good. So this becomes negative 1 to the n power over 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n plus 1. So far, so good? Okay, so now here's uh, the next thing that I'm going to say. We know a little something about arctangent of x. We know that arctangent of 0 happens to be equal to 0. Right? Arctangent of 0 is equal to 0. So I'm going to use that as like my initial condition. I'll put that in red just so we can solve for that C. So given the fact that arctangent of zero equals zero, which is equal to C plus, what happens when I plug zero in for this X? The whole summation is just zero because that's where it's centered, right? So arctangent of zero is equal to zero, which is equal to C plus this thing evaluated when x is equal to 0. So all I'm doing is I'm plugging in 0 for x and saying that, that that's going to be equal to 0. So now I have to solve for C. This is pretty complicated. 0 is equal to C plus 0. What is C? 0. So really, based on that, This is the power series representation for arctangent of x. So let's write the first few terms of that. When n is equal to 0, what do I have? So n is equal to 0 here. The coefficient is just 1 <coughs> times x to the first. So that's just going to be x. When n is equal to 1, what's the next term? that pattern? So the negative 1 to the n makes it alternating. 2n plus 1, when n is an integer, 2n plus 1 is always odd. So it's really saying the denominator and the exponent are always the same, and they're always the odd guys. right? So the negative 1 to the n alternates. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And the denominators and powers are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, dot, 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 